What do you think the implications are for banks? What do you think the, the, the possible opportunities are for banks in uh, blockchain? It's, it's, it's really early to say. The shared ledger technologies as a whole, remember blockchain is only one kind of shared ledger technology. And the Bitcoin blockchain is only one kind of blockchain. So it's a long way from shared ledgers to Bitcoin. Mm. But shared ledger technology in general does seem to open up some potentially interesting new ways of business. It creates a more transparent environment where the opportunities for accountability are different from traditional environments. You could imagine sort of dissolving away the traditional kind of auditing and compliance and you move into a space where the technology itself provides a kind of ambient accountability to the transactions that are taking place in it. That's, that's pretty radical. The ability to run applications in that new space uh, I think is potentially quite disruptive. I suspect that for most of the financial institutions that we work with, it's more about creating new kinds of markets that work in a different way for the modern environment. And those markets will gradually attract liquidity away from the more conventional markets because that transparency will ultimately make them cheaper because the costs that are out of control in most of those markets are actually regulatory costs, not, not technology costs. Mm. So if we can find new ways of doing things, which mean we can make big reductions in the cost of the regulation, uh, that's much more attractive than trying to shave a tiny percentage here and there off of the cost of transactions. Uh, it's, again, I'm, I don't want to be too soundbitey about it, but you know, there's this idea that shared ledgers are really more of a reg tech than a fintech, and I, I'm sympathetic to that idea. It's about creating new kinds of markets which work better than the old markets did. There are different models for looking at what banks do in society, but if you break banks down into their constituent functions, it's very clear that some of those functions could potentially be better performed by other, like, and actually payments is a very good example. It's, it's, it's not transparently obvious why credit institutions should be the people managing payment institutions. I mean, they're historically they're connected, but logically they're sort of different mm -hmm. things. So if you go into a world where you have, you, know, you go into a world where people have these payment accounts and they move money between them, and those are quite separate from the provision of credit as a function, or people with the transfer functions the, the, and the pooling functions whereby people save money, you can see those beginning to separate and technology sort of pulling those apart. And what that would mean, I think, in practice is that there are some areas where new technologies like the blockchain, shared ledgers, Bitcoin, might take some of those functions and do them in a new and different and better way. I mean, one analogy I sort of think of is I, I remember like 20 years ago in the first flush of enthusiasm about the new technology of smart cards. Uh, we all got really into the idea of you could have offline electronic purses, the days of Mondex and Visa Cash and all these kind of things. And, and it, it turns out they never really worked out in payments. We went debit instead. But the technology platforms that we put in place, the multi-application operating systems for the smart cards, became the platforms for chip and pin and, and, and all sorts of other. And I sort of wonder, you could sort of see a slight analogy in this space, which is actually Bitcoin isn't terribly interesting as a payment mechanism. But what if Bitcoin is interesting and important for something else, not payments? What if there are other functions to do with security and, and, and other kinds of transactions, which actually are better suited to that kind of world. I mean, come on, how often do we see genuinely new technologies come into this space? It's, it's not that often. No. And here is a genuinely new technology which has some really interesting and different characteristics. And based on the historical diffusion of new technologies, you know, technologies often ended up being used for something completely different. And I, I wonder if that's true in this space. So, so conceivably then, a bank is a trusted place where you store your funds and you access credit and your identity and then connects via a range of technologies and APIs to people that are specialists in, well, in those domains. I think that's a realistic vision, Adrian. And, and the reason why I think that is because if, if, that, if that way of thinking is right, if it's your identity and your reputation, which is really the most important attribute, the, the thing that you want managed the most... Uh, effectively. And if the bank can create the personas that you need to go out and interact in these other spaces and turn them into safe spaces that you can, then that puts the bank at the centre of things again. So even though I might be using Facebook to send money from place to place, it's my bank identity that I'm using to establish my authority to do that. 
and, I, and I'm attaching the reputation to that as well. So I, I think what you've just outlined there is actually quite an appealing architecture.